you know, having a correct and efficient left arm action throughout the swing can really be a great boon for your, not only your distance, but for your accuracy as well. In this video, let's talk about three different components of having a good, correct, efficient left arm action, and maybe a couple of the pitfalls that might happen to you if it's not correct. I think a lot of you will be <laughs> finding yourselves in this category of, you'll, you'll find a couple of these points familiar. So, hey, keep watching. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. I'm on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee, get it going all the way to the green so that I can have more fun with my golf game. If, if you're on the same journey, I hope you'll hit the subscribe button, like this video if you liked it, and leave a comment down below. And don't forget to pick up my two cool freebies. I've left links to them down in the description below. One is for my free ebook on 50 tips to hit your longest drives ever. And the other one is a 30 minute video on curing your slice that you can follow in real time and actually cure your slice on the range while watching the video. I hope you'll pick them up. So the left arm in a golf swing uh, serves to establish the arc throughout the backswing into the downswing and then to 30 inches past the ball where the right arm catch up, catches up and they both are straight for the only time in the swing and then the right arm will take over and it will re-establish that same or similar width arc um, around the base of the neck, seventh cervical vertebrae, which would serve as our primary hub. So let's get into three ideas that are gonna help you uh, get more out of your left arm. So number one happens right at a address. I noticed that a lot of golfers that I teach, um, they get off to a bad start by positioning the elbow kind of back here in the hole like this and they get their arms with the elbows kind of far apart you see how my elbow is kind of sitting off to the side of my body some of them will even put it back in the chicken wing hole to begin with and that's going to blow kind of blow the first basic measurement standing to the ball because the arms aren't extended out to begin with as you're going to try to have them be as you go through the impact zone so what i like to do as our first point here I like to do what I call a pet grab so I'm gonna try to get my upper left arm to come around and get on top almost on top kind of a diagonal of this uh, chest muscle um, it feels like I'm kind of super gluing the arm together to the side of the pec uh, that needs a muscle right in here called the pec minor to kind of squeeze that arm over the top like that a little bit of contraction there and then it just feels like my my forearm is still can flop free but it feels like my pec and my humerus bone will be attached at the moment of impact so let me show you how i set that into a in the context of a swing the first thing i'll do after i take the grip set my feet and now i establish this pec grab just like this as part of my one arm measurement so here i've got the arm out in front um, it's much closer to where i'd like to have it as i go through impact so essentially it serves as a sneak preview of what i'm going to be doing through the ball um, let me go through the process one more time and i'll pull the trigger set the feet pick grab and go Okay, major coaching point number two uh, for the left arm is that the left arm and most people, most golfers who are say 10 handicap and above, that covers pretty much everybody watching. Um, you have the wrong action with the left arm uh, to start the downswing and going through impact. Let's review what we want the arm to do. After I've done the pec grab, if I just isolate the left arm motion only, I want my left arm to swing across my body. Here would be a one hour arm swing. This would put my hand opposite my back thigh. 
as it puts the elbow right on the midline of my body. That would be a one hour swing with the arm and this would be a second hour. So that's about as far back as we want this arm to go. It's about two hours that would put the elbow right up on top of the right pec. The problem with this is it never returns to its original position. Um, it actually, you'll be striking the ball with the arm still minus two hours. And this kind of gets us into a concept that my teacher, Mike Austin, used to call the figure seven. So rather than the left arm returning to where it started this way, that would be an independent action that doesn't need the body. But instead, we'd like to form this figure seven, and I'll show you right here between my shoulders, coming down to my arm. you've got what looks like the number seven. Now a powerful swing, a good golf swing of a good golfer, will not let the arm go, but instead use the pivot to drive this arm through while it still remains kind of pinned across the chest. So something like this, I've got to get my left arm back to the ball. I need to shift and turn, maintaining the figure seven, and that therefore impact would look more like this. This is where a lot of golfers will go wrong because they do not have the requisite shift and turn out in front of the arms in order to create this position. So it's just a really nice drill for you to do at home. Maintenance of the figure seven drill. Let's try it with a club. So let me grab the driver again. Let's see what that looks like with the club. So here is I'm two hours deep three hours total because I've wound up my torso an hour and I have to drive my body three hours around the circle to get this arm back to where it started again which would look like this right there now a good golfer a very powerful and effortlessly powerful hitter like a fast Eddie Fernandez somebody like that will actually be so relaxed in the transition with the left arm that the left arm might actually respond by getting pinned deeper across the chest. There is no pull attempt to try to pull the arm back to its original start position, but rather, watch this, wind it up, turn, and if my arm stays relaxed, it'll actually get pinned deeper across my chest which of course is still just driving it into impact this way. So a big relaxation of the arms and not trying to, don't allow the left arm to do anything but its role, which is to wind up but stay there. So when talking about this figure seven, uh, Mike Austin used to do a really cool demonstration uh, with a rope attached around his shoulder acting as his left arm. Uh, let's take a look. The shot with the rope attached from the left arm to the club will prove that the downswing does not start from a pull of the left arm to initiate the downswing. The downswing is initiated by a co coordinated action of the body, arms, hands, legs, and feet, with each receiving its stimulation at the start of the downswing and resulting in the uncocking of the wrist and the unfolding of the right elbow that the club head and shaft catch up with the left arm at impact. I get the feeling when I take a swing at a golf ball that I am making an underhanded pitch or throw of the club head while stepping over onto my left foot and aiming the club through the golf ball. Exactly. Step and throw. So you can see, well, the left wrist will be applying a lot of torque this way. We certainly won't be applying any pulling force in a good golf swing. You can see from Mike's demonstration that that rope had no ability to pull. It could just relax and almost get pulled outwards from centrifugal force as his body went around. So he's actually, you see how he was actually throwing the club into space and it was wrapping around and hitting him in the back. It's a very, very cool demonstration um, that the, a good swing, a powerful swing involves a throw from the top and not a pull of the left arm. Now the best exercise I've ever come up with 
that has you feel the difference between a pull and a throw so that you're able to better maintain the figure seven would be this exercise with the speed whoosh. It's got this ball that telescopes out to the end. Um, we would rather throw than pull. If we can throw, you're gonna throw energy outwards. And if you pull, your elbow will hit this pole and you will not telescope the ball outwards. So I set it up like this. My elbow will almost be touching, brought back to the side of my body and throw. So now I've gotten the ball to the end of the stick and you can see how I have not touched the pole. That means I've got all the escape force going, throwing out to the ball rather than trying to pull. Watch what would happen if I tried to pull. And the ball is not, does not have any impetus to travel out. So we're not picking up a lot of club head speed. We're also, we'd be coming in more with the chicken winging finish. We're losing the figure seven. That'll lead to poor strikes, poor attack angle, um, slice spin, more back spin. Um, a pulling action will absolutely cripple your distance. So if you're having a hard time hitting slices, poor distance, got to really take a look and examine uh, what your left arm is doing and do this exercise many, many times a day. Just like that, I put it back, just like that. So there's the arm action. Notice how the arm stays straight till right about the snap. And then it starts to show you from this angle, see how it starts to fold at the elbow as the upper arm turns over this way, 180 degrees with the forearm assisting, then starts to fold at the elbow so that my wrist can keep going and I can keep accelerating the club further around the circle rather than pulling the handle into the ball trying to stab or harpoon the beast this way and that would look like this and you would know right away if you did this pole exercise. Now this is an isolated arm action if we wanted to do this adding the figure seven it would look more like this like that turn same arm action, but now I'm turning and I'm unwinding that figure seven and driving it back, not just to the ball, but the maintenance of the figure seven will continue perfectly until about 30 inches past the ball where the right arm takes over and the left folds into its shadow. All right, let me see if I can put all three points together into one swing. Uh, we can analyze it in slow motion, break it down and uh, you can see for yourself all three of these main points in action. You have the pec grab at the beginning, the windup of the arm, but then the maintenance of the figure seven coming back into the ball. And then you have the throw of the club instead of a pulling of the club this way, where the arm turns over and starts to fold. So let's see if I can do it. Alright, so you can clearly see in the slow-mo on that swing how I'm not trying to pull this arm through, but rather turn the body through and drive it. I'm more in that position than this position. And then you see in the follow-through how the left arm turns over and folds at the elbow. So hey, I'm going to go back to working on my correct left arm action. Um, I hope this has helped. If it has, please let me know in the comments after you work on it for a bit. I, always happy for an update. I'm Steve. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moorpark, California for hosting us today. And as always, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take care.